There are some theories that are very interesting that attempt to explain why is it that we became so fantastically different from, let's say, our closest animal relatives, other primates like chimpanzees or, or apes. What was the difference that had us become so different than them? One of the leading theories is a, is a theory called the expensive tissue hypothesis. And it actually does have something to do with ketones. In the expensive tissue hypothesis, as the theory goes, our earlier ancestors deviated in this kind of animal family line because we started eating more meat. We started eating food that was so nutritious, so nutrient dense, so loaded with good calories and all of the fats and proteins that we need that it allowed two very distinct changes to occur in us compared to other primates. One, our intestines became significantly shorter. So if you compare the human digestive tract to any other primate animal, if, if we are a primate, um, then if you look at the intestines, they're fantastically different, particularly the large intestine or the colon, because our ancestors, as the theory goes, began eating meat. We didn't need the colon as much um, and because the colon is a place for food to ferment. And so if you're eating a lot of plant matter, like other primates do, you need a much, much larger colon. <clears throat> so we started eating food that was so nutrient dense, our colon shrunk considerably. We didn't need to waste energy on a big, busy colon. At the same time, as we were eating food that was so nutrient dense and so loaded with good fat, it allowed us to have more time to be curious and explore. And so at the same time, our intestines were shrinking because we didn't need them to be so big. Our brain was growing and it's because it had so much nutrition, including ketones. So ketones are an extraordinary fuel for the brain. In fact, one of the reasons why a baby that is born premature will be more likely to have learning disorders later in life is because premature baby didn't have time to get very fat. And fat baby is healthy baby. And fat baby gets into ketosis. Let's say you and I were to, to fast straight for two days. If you took a six month old baby, that baby would be in a deeper state of ketosis in two hours than you and I would be in two days because the baby is burning so much of its beautiful chubby fat. And the more the body burns fat, the more it makes ketones and the tissue of the body that appears to benefit the most in response to ketones is the brain. The brain, the moment ketones hit the blood stream, the brain immediately starts taking in ketones for a fuel. Very often, I have students who have had a professor, perhaps with the best of intentions, but ignorant nonetheless, tell the student that the brain, the main fuel for the brain is glucose, that the brain prefers glucose. And I show them just one or two papers to prove that wrong immediately. And it is reflected in, in, in this idea, which if, if to use some convenient UK units, if blood glucose is five millimolar, that's a concentration, a way of measuring an amount of, of something, Blood glucose may be five millimolar or 80 milligrams per deciliter for the American audience. Um, that would be a normal glucose. And if you and I were to fast for 24 or so hours, we may get up to about one millimolar of, of ketones. And yet even then, the brain has already switched to get the majority of its energy from the ketone. And so don't tell me that in this dynamic, the brain prefers this one because this one's five times higher than this one. And even in that scenario, the brain is already getting more than half of its energy from the ketone. So all of this is my long-winded way of saying, when we look at the principles of evolution, one of the leading theories is this idea that we began eating essentially a meat-heavy diet that, it, it, again, is so nutritious that it allowed our brain, brains to grow. Maybe one final point on this, although it is a bit of a barbed comment, people may find this somewhat amusing or disappointing or frustrating. The title of a book just published which is that vegetarians have smaller brains. This is seen in humans, that the less a human eats meat, then the smaller the brain becomes. The brain is so dependent on the nutrient density that comes from animal-sourced foods that it will suffer um, when it doesn't get them.